Hello and welcome to another Living Oracle Divination reading. Today we're using Tarot of the Divine and we're also using Gateway Oracle cards and apparently that's all we're using. No charms, no dice, just the Oracle and the cards. Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, Group 4, Group 5. Timestamps are in the description box below. Group 1, I went ahead and pulled your cards, but let's start with your Oracle. Igniting Courage. I am strong, valiant, and courageous. This is telling you to move forward fearlessly. Gather your inner forces, take a risk, speak up for yourself by honoring your truth. This isn't the time to be timid or hold back. Go forward gallantly with your banner of truth waving in the wind. You are a light bearer for others. The universe wants you to know that being courageous doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It means that in spite of fear and hesitation, you take action anyway. It's all right to fall down, just don't stay down. Do not allow yourself to be limited by the beliefs of others or even your own beliefs. Face your fears, go beyond the boundaries of your self-imposed barriers. Live passionately and boldly. And a question that you can ask yourself is, what could this card represent about my own fears? How can I overcome fear and step into courage? And what is the ultimate outcome if I conquer my hesitations? So clearly, you must be contemplating some new venture in your life, probably wondering how you will move forward. And I think the way forward is simply just through action. Seven of Swords. Yeah, bold risk. This talked about taking a bold risk, and that's exactly what the Seven of Swords is. It's about taking a bold risk and a, a gamble taking action. A nine of Cups. This can lead to some very nice emotional fulfillment for you. And Queen of Wands, there's you taking the action. I think you're feeling more secure is what I'm getting. Oh yes, okay. What I, what I sense with this is perhaps you're already in this energy of taking risk and challenging your fears and as Shirley MacLaine would say, going out on a limb. You're ready to do that. And I feel, I think that you're, I feel like you're becoming more emotionally safe and secure as a result of taking, and I feel like there's small actions, but I feel like you're about to take some big bold action and moving away from, moving away from past situations that might not have been growth producing, might not have been emotionally fulfilling, that might have made you feel fearful and afraid, and definitely taking these lessons that you've learned with you. And I do feel that you're going to be entering into a, a creative phase. I just want to pull one more card. Mm, I love it. Strength. Oh, definitely, you are, uh, it's interesting, this is a lion, but it's a crocodile. It's almost like the lion, it's a lion, but it has a crocodile. This is interesting. <laughs> okay, the lion has a crocodile face, and lions are about courage, everything that we're talking about here, right? But crocodile is ancient wisdom, so it's almost like you're taming your inner becoming aware of and taming your inner wisdom and primitive fears, everything that's primitive. When you think of literally the brain, the medic, medig, medid, hmm, I knew I was gonna screw it up, medigula I think it's called, it's the primitive part of the brain and then from that, the brain evolved and uh, became a more complex structure. And it's in this primitive part of the brain where fear resides. This is a scientific fact. It's connected directly to your cortisol, to your adrenals. And so in this particular card, we see the woman taking control or mastery over that part of the brain, right? And, and in that, um, stepping into this energy of greater courage and strength. So that's why I say I feel like you're going to move even more forward and it feels creative. 
the energy that I feel, it feels creative. So you might end up creating something, taking on creative projects, immersing yourself in hobbies, crafts, art, poetry, music. It could be some aspect of your uh, of a new job or a new career. That's not indicate, it's just an energy that I'm feeling where you're moving towards a greater creativity and more life enhancing. And I do feel like it has to do with vocation and, and literally career or life purpose, which is your vocation and the way you earn money, a job or a career. Beautiful reading, Group 1. Thank you for letting me do this reading for you. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set a doll, I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or whenever Spirit tells me to. Wishing you even more empowered courage and success. And with that, I'll move to Group 2. Hi, Group 2. I went ahead and pulled your tarot cards, but for now, let's start here. Rising above, I see only beauty and grace. Okay, so it would appear that you are... Your thoughts are elevating, you, you're focusing on the uh, beauty and abundance of your life, you're stepping out of the ordinary into extraordinary, you have the potential that you haven't even begun to tap into yet, maybe you're becoming aware of that potential. This is a time for you to reach higher than before, do not fall down into doubt, remember your true calling. The universe wants you to know that as the lotus rises out of the mud into the light, so too are you rising up from to even greater heights. And sometimes this will happen naturally and organically, and sometimes it's an act of your own will. This is the time to rise above any situation that's not empowering. Even if there are some people you might leave behind, let your sh light shine for everyone to see. Rise up, step into your potential. You are a healer, a teacher, a leader. And questions you can ask yourself at this time. What do I need to rise above? Is there a fear that holds me back from rising above my current challenge? How would my life change if I stepped into my role as a leader, teacher, or healer? Okay, we'll talk more about that. Nine of Coins. Okay, so the Nine of Coins is traditionally about um, abundance, right? It's about generosity. It's also there's a maturity of knowing the balance of knowing how much to give and also in equal or greater measure holding on to so that you don't deplete yourself. So this is talking not just about finances, but it's, it's your resources, right? So you are generous with people, but you're not over generous that you, do, you completely deplete yourself. In this what might be what you're rising above, this, this energy of needing to gives over give to people in in the sense where then you're left drained or feeling depleted and because of that you have energy and vitality to create your own life and to create even greater abundance in your life this is nice we have the sun so feeling optimistic illuminated in other words, awareness, right? Greater expanded awareness. Perhaps a useful vitality, a return of vitality in your life. Uh, a return of optimism, hence you're rising above all this stuff that over giving in the past things that drained you. Stepping into a greater place of abundance. Three of Swords. It might have been the result of a painful truth. Uh, that you just needed to acknowledge and then heal and integrate the lessons of in your life. And oh, how interesting. We have the Six of Coins. And the Six of Coins is, this is about, comes kind of back to this card, right? You've learned how to be generous without being over generous. And in that also you've learned to receive. And I think the greatest gift that you received was the awareness of overgiving. And yeah, I just, you're in such a good place. Oh, beautiful. I wanted to pull one more card and I'm glad I did. We have the Two of Cups. And so what I feel this is leading you towards is greater harmony within yourself, between your mind and your heart, your lower self, your higher self, you as a material being and you as a spirit uh, being as well and also in your relations with others 
Now, Two of Cups can also talk about the need to make a choice. And I think the choice that you need to make, I think you already made it, to be quite honest. But this could be talking about being more selective in the type of people that you attract. Making certain that the relationships that you engage in are those that, uh, with all this n knowledge and awareness that you've gleaned about overgiving, I think you've, you've learned discernment or perhaps what's about to come into your field of vision is, now that you've learned this, is n distinguishing the difference of in almost like in immediacy as opposed to getting into the relationship and then realizing it. I think you're entering into a period where you spot these, I like to call them red flags. You're beginning to spot these little red flags more immediately. And so you're showing more discernment in your, who you bring into your circle and where you invest your time and your energy and your resources and your love. I also think that you're moving past old hurts into a period of healing and wholeness. Oh, yeah, Spirit's saying you're entering into a, prof a profound, and the word that I'm hearing is radical forgiveness of everything and everyone, including yourself. Beautiful energy to be in. Absolutely gorgeous energy to be in. And yeah, you are rising above. You're rising above lower-based emotions, lower-based thoughts and fears and negativity. And even though this isn't particular to any of the cards, overall and the energy that I'm feeling is that you're rising into greater prosperity and love and harmony within yourself, with others. Actually, what Spirit's saying is with all. It's a beautiful energy. I feel like you. there's some underlying silver lining, something that you became aware of. And I think that awareness was so subtle and yet so profound, it shifted everything about your life. That's what I'm sensing here. And as a result of that, yes, you, you've, there's healing, there's... There's this incredible state of abundance that you feel. And I feel like you've reconnected with your sense of, I want to say family and community and whatever that is for you, right? Whether it's a natural world or human world or spirit world. I feel like you've integrated or actually it just, it feels like you've tapped into and the more you tap into it, into that energy, the more you rise above all those lower based energies. That's what I feel for you. And I, and I do feel that even better relationships with yourself and with others are awaiting you. And it could be that someone is very soon coming into your life that is going to add unto. This could be a good friend, it could be an intimate partner, it could be someone that feels like family. I feel like someone's coming into your life or about to come into your life. And this is a very light and bubbly and almost feels effortless. The, the, the communications with this person feel almost feel, or the way of being with this person almost feels effortless. That's what I have for you, group two. Thank you for letting me do your reading. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or whenever spirit tells me to. Wishing you greater love and prosperity. And with that, I will now move to group high group three. I went ahead and pulled your tarot. Oh, but let's start with your oracle. And this is wonderful. Expedi exceeding expectations soaring into excellence. So clearly something in your life, uh, maybe something that you were hoping for, wishing for, or working on um, is about to exceed your expectations. This is also saying 
it's this is the time to stretch and grow if you haven't yet taken action this is the time to step up step into challenges opportunities there's a saying do one thing each day that scares you like take action on it right that's this energy you may have been playing it small, but now is your chance to dream big, expect miracles, believe that the best will occur for you, and it will. Make plans, big plans for the future. Do not act as if you're inadequate in order to make others feel sec secure. In the months ahead, you'll be exceeding inner and outer expectations, so get ready to fly. Some questions you can ask yourself. Have I been playing so small that others wouldn't feel insecure? Am I ready to exceed my own expectations? What are my true expectations in my life, and am I satisfied with them? Yeah, so this is about expanding, growing, expanding, and exceeding yourself and areas of your life that perhaps you've been playing small. You can't make this stuff up. Here's a new opportunity coming in. This is this new energy. Getting ready to take bold action on areas of your life. Taking action, doing that one thing each day. Something that you're afraid of and doing it anyway. You know, for example, maybe you're afraid to walk alone in your neighborhood. You're going to do it and you're going to allow yourself to be aware of all those emotions without feeling like you have to give in to them. And at the end of that walk, you'll realize how small that fear really was and where did that fear originate? And isn't it funny that you let that dictate so much of your life for so long? That's just an example. This could be any area. Going out and speaking to someone, learning something online, just think of all the different things that you're afraid of. And it's basically getting out of your comfort zone and taking action on not just to overcome trivial fears, but big fears, right? To do with relationships and career and communication and even to do with your body. Maybe you're not your ideal weight, so what? maybe you're aging so what you can still be beautiful so take a chance on you and it doesn't mean you have to wear the perfect clothes maybe you just have to allow yourself to feel confident enough in the clothes that you're in and get out there and strut your stuff sexy the word sexy the real definition is just confidence and when you're confident you exude that magnetism that's what sexy is it's magnetic confidence beautiful six of cups six of cups is talking about memories people places things from your past that bubble up and surface to the present and there's a, a beautiful nostalgic so maybe these are memories uh, or people that come back from the past that and this is where you're stepping up, right? Stepping up and maybe communicating with people from the past or picking up uh, past passions, past projects, maybe going and visiting places of the past that once brought you joy or pain and suffering and now you're willing to go back and to heal, to do the healing, That's if there's any healing that's necessary. I get a joyful sense though with this reading. I think this is you returning to former joy is what I'm feeling. Yeah, and celebration. Again, you just can't make this stuff up. And bringing greater balance and harmony into your life. And I'm going to pull, oh, wonderful. <laughs> the final card is Eight of Coins. And it's interesting. I mean, she doesn't look very happy in this but uh, I don't get that sense with this reading. What I get the sense of with this reading is that this journey that you're about to embark upon of expanding and growing and reigniting some former passion, whether it's to do with a, a place, a person, or a thing, I feel like it's going to bring greater joy into your life a sense of reconnection. 
a sense of harmony and balance in your life. I also think it's going to speed certain areas of your life up. It's not coincidental. We have the last three cards are all to do with coins, right? Coins is to do with prosperity and safety and security, whether that's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and or financial in nature. And I do feel it's you're entering into a period of greater prosperity. And there could even be some, because this talks about an opportunity, as well as a resurgence of energy, new energy and new creativity. I feel like it's something that you're going to end up being very passionate about, whether it's a person, place or thing. You're going to be very passionate about it, and I feel like you're going to invest a lot of your time and energy. And this could also be talking about learning, right? Coins are also learning, undertaking new learning endeavors. So it could be that you're you're um, learning something new, but the sense that I get with this is that it is connected to someone, something, or some place to do with the past. <coughs> Excuse me. And <clears throat> I feel like you're going to invest a lot of your time and energy and effort into this. Uh, this could even be self-improvement. Something from something from the past that reignites, re-sparks. It's like a, yeah, it's like an ignition or a spark. You, it, it propels you. It makes you feel lighter, more joyful. And you want to, and it happens, I feel like it happens or organically and naturally. You put your time and energy and effort into it. And so you learn about a lot about yourself. And it instills confidence and it brings out qualities in you that because this is practice makes perfect energy this is the apprentice apprenticeship to self-mastery and this is a brilliant artistry right it's it's almost like perfection and with that can come increase right because it leads to the nine of coins the ten of coins which is hap you know uh, financial mental emotional physical spiritual security safety and as well as prosperity and that happily ever after type thing energy when it comes to finances and safety and and comfort with family and community and that's where you're headed you're I, and I do feel like you're heading into a new community whether that's literal or metaphoric. And it could be that it's reminiscent of some place and people, community, a sense of community, where you felt the most joy in your past. Doing things and being a certain way that felt right for you. I almost feel like something about your inner child is being ignited and sparked. That's what I'm feeling. This is a beautiful energy and it, it's effervescent and it's, it's expansive is what I feel. Awesome. Thank you for letting me do your reading group three. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. New moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or whenever spirit tells me to. Wishing you great prosperity and success and greater joy. And with that, I will move to group four. Group four, I went ahead and pulled your tarot, but I want to start here with your oracle, emerging into grace. I open my soul to grace. Interesting, because this is a very serene, peaceful, it looks like an, a card where it's effortless. There's not this energy of having to exert yourself and also it it appears to have an energy of rest and relaxation and in that restoration and healing. So yes, all is well. You can relax and let go. Your path is divinely guided. Gifts from the Creator are pouring into your life. Gratitude abounds. A spirit of grace is softly unfolding in your life. In the stillness of retreat, the gifts of spirits will emerge at your feet in gratitude and thankfulness, and opening into the deepest spiritual realms is occurring. Simply be ready and be open as waves of sacred love will pour into your heart. Grace is growing within you so that more and more you serve as a safe sanctuary for others. Oh, that's beautiful. 
Some questions that you can ask yourself at this time. How does the Spirit of Grace want to work in my life? What has blocked it from filling my life in the past? And if I truly let go and open myself to grace, what will unfold? Yeah, there's a sense of mystery in this. I get a sense, I feel like you've moved into this, what I'd like to say, the state of awe, where it's, you're curious about the, the greatness and the expansiveness of the mystery of everything. And you're in awe of it. Yeah, and I feel like this was a profound awakening for you and illuminating and enlightening period or time and you may still be in this energy and it's beautiful because <laughs> I do feel like it is deconstructing and reconstructing your life starting at your at your thought level not just your thinking brain, but literally your, your mental body, which is part of your auric body. And it's having a profound external rippling effect into the other uh, etheric bodies, your emotional body, your physical body, your spiritual body. There's a magnetism that's happening here. Oh, interesting. Okay, I w I'll come back to that. Okay, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I want to pull one more card. Mm-hmm, okay. This is nice. Um, what have you been awakening to? I think you've been awakening to fears and addictions and automation, habits in other words. Uh, so automatic, compulsive, knee-jerk reactions, um, automatic emotional responses, and again, they, they're not really responses, they're reactions, and to places where you have felt restricted, limited. This could be physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, in your relationships, spiritually. Oh, yeah. This is so interesting because I feel like you're in a period of integration. You are really allowing for, you're actually in a period, a, a peri and I said it here, this feels like uh, um, healing. You're in a profound process of healing. And in that integration of, uh, and an integration is, this isn't just happening on a mental level, an emotional level. This is literally happening at an energetic level. I feel it literally in your cells. Um, and how do I describe this? So mentally you are being able to get clarity and insight as to why certain things happened and how this is um, working to the evolvement and and evolution of you as a mental, emotional, physical, spiritual body. And that's why I feel like it's percolating out into the etheric bodies as well. But this is also happening literally at a cellular level in your body. Something is awakening. It's integrating. It's processing. It's regenerating. And three to six months, I feel for the next three to six months is what I'm hearing Spirit say and the energy that I feel. The next three to six months are going to be very profound for you. And I think what Spirit is saying is this energy that you're in of rest and relaxation and retreat. And it might even be like a self-imposed isolation. Um, this is exactly where you need to be right now because this is the process that you are uh, in and will be in. So I feel like whatever <coughs> hurts, whether they're mental, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, relationship hurts in the past, I feel like these are done. I feel like you've been in a process of 
uh, analytical evaluation is what Spirit's saying. And now that this integration is the emotional aspect of it. And that's why the Tower is up here, not the Five of Cups, because this is the intellectual aspect that was shifted, that was struck, right? And it, it's, it's awakening you to these patterns, is what I want to say. Patterns. And this is what's invoking and evoking this emotional, it almost feels like a purging, an upheaval and a purging. And because you are, I feel like you're analytical or at least you're very reflective, this is where the integration happens. And it's, prof it's and you might be, have felt some emotions come up, but I feel like the next three to six months, you go really deep into this. This is what I'm feeling energetically. It's like you are willing to go deep into this. You are willing to surrender into this because I think somewhere you have realized that the only way through it is through it. The only way through it is through it. And the way through it is by simply allowing yourself to sit still and be overwhelmed by it. And to process it intellectually and emotionally, moment to moment, as it's occurring. This is beautiful, because what happens is, it's a chrysalis. I, I like to call this the chrysalis phase. This is where so much of you dissolves, and you are reborn, and that's why you have the Page of Wands and the Two of Wands. This is new energy. This is dynamic after this. This is amazing dynamic energy that you're stepping into. And you might already start to feel this now. Because I do feel like you're very energetically sensitive. Whether you're consciously aware of that yet or not, three to six months time, you'll become even more consciously aware of that. And I want to say you're psychically sensitive energetically psychically sensitive and I feel what happens is because you allow yourself to go through this period uh, and this process during this period you are revitalized and that's what's happened I felt that energy at a cellular level as well as in the etheric bodies and so what happens is new opportunity comes to you as a result so the page of wands is typically talking about um, messages and new energy, new opportunity, childlike optimism, carefree uh, attitudes, um, transforming energy into friends. Uh, sorry, transforming, yeah, transforming en enemies into friends. But it's more about attracting more friends than you do enemies. But I feel like this is the internal en enemy and, and friendliness, right? But it, what happens, what the, the, the real energy is playfulness, joyfulness, lightness, enthusiasm, rediscovery, passion, new energy, revitalization. And then, <laughs> yeah, Two of Wands. This is about the world as your oyster. What would you like to create now that you've genuinely healed? I think you've been in a process, a long, long process of the energy of healing has always kind of been there, but I feel like this is you totally immersing into it. And that's why I say it's the great mystery. You are less and less afraid of the fears and the trauma and, and all of that that has happened to you. And you're willing to just hunker down, <laughs> is what Sarah is saying. You're willing to just hunker down and be overwhelmed by it and allow everything, the integration, the integration of it. I feel like you come to some sort of energy after this, like I said, this revitalization, enthusiasm. It's almost like a new life, a, a, an awakening. This kind of feels akin to the, um, the resurrection card. Uh, except that you weren't, you know, there's a sense of feeling dead in that 
energy, right? Like a sleeplessness and an awaken and awaken literally waking up, but it's an, it's a, it's alarming. I don't I think you're past that being alarmed, being completely rocked, sh uh, shaken and 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 uh, even though that's kind of accentuated here, being electrified and shocked, right? I, I don't feel like that's, I don't feel like this has been shocking to you. I think you're past the shock is what I guess I'm trying to say. And that's why this doesn't feel like shocking energy like the revelation. This is just because you've gone through this process after about three to six months, it's a revitalization. It's, a, it's an enthusiasm, literally even greater physical energy. And that's why I say in this one, you might start planning a, a future for yourself. I also sense that if you went through any sort of physical illness, you might be in the process of recovering certain aspects of your health over the next three to six months. And that's hence again why this new vitality and why I was feeling that at the cellular level and moving out through the etheric, etheric body. You might even move, literally, physically. You might make a, the decision not only to move away from the past, but literally a physical move to a brand new place so that you can start a new life. So whether this is a metaphoric move or a literal move, you are moving into a new life and it is one of your creation. I don't feel like that's the energy that, um, that you're in right now because you're in the, the energy of healing. You might be thinking about the future, but the actual planning, that will occur after this process, after this healing. So allow for whatever but whatever desires or, or thoughts of the future pop up, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, just a feeling, whatever, take note of it. The real planning will begin soon enough and it will occur and you'll feel it. I feel like you're going to feel it energetically. Just It's like one day you just wake up and you suddenly have more energy and it's not just one day, it's a series of days. And you suddenly realize that so much has shifted and changed. And this could also be the awakening, right? It's time to create a healthier, happier, more prosperous, whatever prosperity means for you. Physical health, mental health, emotional health, relationships, finances, environment, right? There is a definite shift occurring. So good for you, Group 4. Thank you for letting me do this reading. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or whenever Spirit tells me to. I wish you great healing, profound, deep awakening, and soon enough, energy and vitality to begin again, and so much better, by the way because I feel the energy. It's just so much lighter, more joyful. Thank you, and I will now move on to group five. Hi, group five. I went ahead and pulled your tarot, but I'm gonna start with your oracle. This is lovely, being in flow. I am in flow with the universe. So perhaps you are currently in this energy of, you know, just kind of going with the flow and not uh, getting caught up in anything and, a, being more malleable and flexible, everything falling into place because you're not resisting the drift of the great river of life. You're not resisting and getting caught up in, I don't want to do that because, or I don't want to have this conversation because, or you're wrong and I'm right. I feel like you're moving away from all of that resistance. I think you're letting go of the shore and allowing the currents to direct your, dict uh, your to dictate your direction. You don't need to decide and plan everything yourself. I feel like you've let go of control, and this isn't control where you are completely powerless. I think people often think of that that if I don't have control, then I'm powerless. I think what you're discovering is that the more you let go and surrender the more control you actually have. That's what I feel with this card. 
The universe wants you to know that when you're truly in flow, you don't need to push or exert great effort to make things happen. That's the energy I was feeling that hence the surrender right and in that there's more power more control and more empowerment if there's a situation in your life that isn't falling into place just let go it's not the right time if there aren't smooth currents regarding a specific area in your life it might mean you're trying to control the outcome or that you're being overly self-critical. Know that you can flow around any obstacle and the way to do so is with gratitude, grace and appreciation and surrender of control. Allow others in spirit to support and care for you. So questions you can ask yourself. Is there anything stopping my ability to adapt to the circumstances of my life? If so, how can I move beyond it? What is the most important area in my life to let go of so that I can get into flow? Or I'd like to say, what is the most important thought, idea, or emotion I have about this so that I can let go of it and get into flow? Do I need to stay in control? And does this truly serve me? Oh, this is so beautiful. Because you are surrendering, because you are distinguishing even when to be in control and when to surrender, you have all the tools, resources, <clears throat> excuse me, gifts, capacities, and abilities to manifest. I feel like you're a powerful manifester, to be quite honest. And yeah, letting go of and putting to rest this need to know this need to everything has to be a certain way and I have to be in control of it and you're not doing it right and so I have to do it I think you're letting go of all of that we have the lovers the wheel of fortune this is beautiful and one more king of coins oh yeah this is just beautiful I'm so happy to see that all the readings the energies are definitely shifting for everyone I feel like the entire collective put COVID aside or maybe it's partly because COVID helped us helped us it's you know it was kind of almost like a divine intervention to help the entire world wake up the entire collective to wake up to shift things that so many of us were just unwilling to shift and to wake us to things that we just were so content to be in our own little bubbles that we weren't willing to wake up to see what what else was going on and this is what I, I kind of sense not just with the energy of the collective but with with the readings that I have been doing over the last few months and I felt this energy of resistance a lot. I've often times thought it was my resistance. And there could be truth that I was also feeling my own personal resistance to things. But there were times when it was a little overwhelming for me. And of course, I just sometimes forget to recognize that I am so energetically, psychically sensitive that I'm picking up other people's energy as well. And I th just thought that was mine. And it wasn't until the last couple readings that I tuned in and realized, oh no, this isn't just mine. This isn't just me. I'm picking up some of you, many of you. And it's that energy of resistance and energy of frustration and irritation as a result and even disappointment that goes with that resistance you know, not willing to let go of certain things because we we're so used to it and we don't know how to be without it. And spirit saying, but what you be is something so much more and greater and I created you, so trust me on this one. And I feel like many of us are finally letting go. You are definitely letting go. And I feel like you might have been one of the group that have struggled the most with this. And that's okay. I think it's taught you a lot about who you are and who you're not. And I think it's awakening a dream that you never even thought possible for yourself. A reality that you never thought possible for yourself. And I feel like you're entering into the energy of wonder. And I, I think at times you break down and cry. 
This is the energy that I'm feeling. You have moments where you just, it's almost like spontaneous crying and you, you don't know why you're crying, it's just you're crying. And sometimes it's because you're so overwhelmingly happy and sometimes you feel like you're overwhelmingly sad. And it might feel a little bipolar at times, but it's not, you're not bipolar. This is just the process of purging. This is the pr part of the process that some people experience when they're what we'll call ascending. Moving out of old energies into new energies that have always been there, but they've been so suppressed and dormant. And this is like an, an awakening and a resurgence. And that's why we have the death card and the magician and the lovers and the wheel of fortune. Because this is a process of letting things, letting the old die and coming into this new, beautiful, emotional energy of harmony, balance, optimism, innocence, joy, overwhelming love, connection. And that's why I say when you have those moments where if you find yourself spontaneously crying, and it's just because there's just so much love filling up your heart, this is this energy, and this is you awakening not just consciously, this isn't a conscious awakening for you. This is an energetic, emotional awakening for you. And this is incredibly, profoundly life-altering, life-changing. And it's just leading to greater and greater joy. And there may be times, because I'm hearing spirit whispering in my ear, there may be times when you say to yourself, I feel so stupid. Why did I, the coulda, shoulda, woulda? That's okay. Just recognize that you're doing that and that's just old energy. And it's, it's actually part of the awakening process. Why did I do that? Oh my gosh, how could I have done that? Well, you did that because you weren't who you are right now. You weren't in this energy. And this is just the realization this is your awakened energy looking back and going, oh my goodness, how could I have been that? How could I have done that? Who I am now, I would have never done that. That's exactly right. So recognize that you are profoundly changed. And you will not repeat those whatever that caused you to think a certain way to feel bad about yourself or feel a certain way to feel bad about yourself or to think of a, a certain way that made you feel bad about others or feel bad about others. This is a beautiful, profound shift. And it leads to such incredible maturity, mental maturity, wisdom. This even goes beyond mental and emotional. This is this is such a profound wisdom. And I would dare say this is the master teacher energy. There is something that you have learned so deeply, so profoundly about your life. I feel like you have the potential to be a, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it as Spirit saying, a best-selling author if you put your journey, your story, your life lessons, pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, right? That's this energy. This is the master storyteller, the master teacher energy that you're moving into. This could even be the, na the master orator. Think of someone like, uh, oh, what's his name? I can see him. The tall, handsome man that wrote all the books. Um, oh, oh, Anthony, Anthony Robbins, thank you. Uh, and this is like an Anthony Robbins energy. You know, the story of in the well of despair and moving out of that energy into such enlightenment and how it transformed not only his life, but look at the lives that he's changed as a result of the wisdom that he gleamed and shared with the world. So in whatever way that feels for you or manifests for you, and that's why the magician is here, you have all the resources to be this. I guess the question is, will you let spirit guide you? Will you take the action? 
I, feel, I think you will. <laughs> I think you are. I think you're moving in that direction. And, you know, maybe I'm putting too much, too much bigness on it, you know, about the Anthony Robbins. But that's the energy that it feels. Maybe as it manifests, it may not be that big, right? But it's still big. It still touches, deeply, profoundly touches and impacts lives. And this could just be each person that you meet. So it may not be on that massive scale, but it could be as well. I don't want to delete that. I don't want to diminish that. But at the same time, I don't want to set you up to think that it's going to be that colossal. It's going to be for you whatever you and spirit choose it to be. Regardless of the size of it, the magnitude, the profundity of it, it's deep. It's so deeply transformative. This is the teacher. This is the mentor. This is the wise sage. And enduring. I also, Spirit saying, a long life, a very long life ahead of you. A long life of prosperity, mental, emotional, spiritual, enlightened prosperity. And also, a long journey of manifesting. You know, this is a huge tree and it's an evergreen. It's not something that loses its leaves in hard times. This is the wisdom you've gleaned. You've turned into an evergreen. You hold on to your leaves because you can withstand the brutality, the despair, the austerity, the hardships. That's the wisdom that you've gleaned. And you have the potential to be an incredible, potent teacher and author is, the, is what, that might not apply to all of you, but definitely it wouldn't come th from spirit if it wasn't meant for at least one of you. One of you could be an author, a profoundly successful and, like I said, to that capacity of profoundly changing the lives of others. Wayne Dwyer, Dyer's also comes to mind. It's that energy. There's something so profound that you have learned, that you have awakened to, discovered. The wisdom that you have needs to be shared in whatever way resonates for you because Spirit's saying, uh, I've given you all the resources, skills, gifts, capacities, talents, abilities that you need to manifest this. And all you need to do is stop resisting, be in flow, allow the, the past to die, and go with the flow. Because even in the Wheel of Fortune, this change, it's organic, it's natural. And sometimes, yes, it's your will. It's your will in harmony with the, with the divine. Such a beautiful reading. And a long, beautiful, prosperous life ahead of you. Thank you for letting me do this reading for you, Group 5. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. New Moon, Full Moon, Mercury Retrograde, or whenever Spirit tells me to. Um, interesting this is what's catching my eye full a full life is what spirit wants you to know you're moving into a full life of joy and harmony prosperity so thank you for watching and until i see you in a future video ciao for now